I am so excited. We are going to meet lots of dinosaurs today. We are not going to meet the dinosaurs, but to see the dinosaurs. But I thought the dinosaurs were alive, like in the movie Jurassic Park. I am sorry, but that's not true. Wow, they are so big. Indeed. Who found out about dinosaurs? The paleontologist. Did they use time machine to go back in time and see dinosaurs? <laughs> Not really. Nature has a way of preserving history in the form of fossils. Fossils? Hmm. Before I tell you about fossils, can you answer some of my questions? Yes, sure. What happens when a plant or an animal dies? They are destroyed when they decay or when another animal eats it. Yes, that's true for most plants and animals. I know that. But sometimes the animal is buried before it can be destroyed and after millions of years it gets turned into a rock. So fossils are animals or plants turned into stones? Yes, in millions of years of time. So if I bury a dead insect in the ground, would it become a fossil? Hmm. That can happen, but remember real fossils are millions of years old. So, what happens in these millions of years that an animal turns into stone? Fossils can be formed in different ways. Different processes? Yes, sometimes a whole animal like the mammoth gets trapped in the ice and stays frozen for thousands of years and they are found after thousands of years not changed a bit. Wow! That is how they knew the Mammoth of Ice Age movie existed. Hmm, yes. Other ways? Um, sometimes an insect gets stuck in the tree sap. The thick extract from the trees? Yes, and then the sap hardens into a thick, clear material called amber. And does the insect also stay unchanged for millions of years? Yes, by these two processes, the creature remains unchanged. But how are dinosaurs' fossils formed? I was coming to that part. Most dinosaur fossils are formed by mold and cast. Mold and cast? Yes, imagine a dinosaur has drowned in a river and its body sinks to the bottom of the river. So its flesh will either rot away or will be eaten by creatures of the river like fish. And eventually, only the bones are left. Mud and sand called sediments cover the skeleton over many years. And over many more years, more sediments would cover the skeleton. And then the floor of the river sinks under the weight of the sediment. And as more time passes, lower layers are pressed into hard rocks. And thus, the skeleton is completely surrounded by compressed stone. Yes, you are right. Then, over other hundred years to come, the bones are washed away by tiny trickles of water called groundwater. Mm -hmm. Now, the washed away bones leave spaces in the exact shape of dinosaur skeleton. What are the spaces called? It is called natural mold. As in the mold and cast. Yes, now groundwater brings tiny pieces of rock into the mold. After millions of years, these tiny rock pieces fill the mold. And also, the rock is pressed further and further underground. And thus, over time, the entire skeleton becomes solid rock. Many years later, the rock surrounding the skeleton rises to the surface. When an earthquake occurs, uh, yes, or when mountains rise naturally. How do the paleontologists find the fossil? 
Slowly, rain and wind washes away the top rocks. But sometimes, paleontologists have to dig long time to find them. Wow, this is amazing. I want to become two things now. What? Paleontologist after a few years and a fossil after millions of years. Oh, great. Come, let's finish the tour of the museum.